Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now you'll notice straight away I've got no spinny thing showing you a 360 of this finished product here. That's because it's enormous. <laughs> this is one of the city ruins from Flames of War. It's part of their scenery range and it's one of the few, I think it might be the only thing that doesn't come pre-painted. So what I'm going to show you is how to get a really quick uh, generic city finish to them. They would work very well with uh, World War II era stuff, so Flames of War. Uh, they've also got a nice, like the shop window things down the bottom, they look a little bit more Team Yankee. So these are going to work for generic European buildings for most of the 20th century, no matter what game you're playing. Now these were very kindly sent along to me from the Battlefront team for me to have a play with, so I thought it would be worth trying something new because I don't ordinarily do a lot of scenery or 50mm scenery. So all of the paints, and there's not many of them, will be linked in the description below. Let's get started. Alright, now the first thing you need to understand about these ruins is that they're enormous. I'm really having trouble keeping them in shot. So uh, if it's a little difficult to see what I'm doing, I do apologize. I'm going to try and make sure that you can see the important steps as we go through this. But uh, yeah, man, they're big. <laughs> they're so big. So I've started off after assembling them, and they went together so quick. Uh, I've given them a spray, first of all, on one side with, let's spin that around, Zandri dust to begin with, and then I've sprayed the other side with Uniform Grey from the Army Painter. You'll see that you will get a little bit of the Uniform Grey, you know, your second colour is going to come through the windows, basically. But don't worry. We're going to turn around and paint over the top of that anyway. What's important is that two-tone color scheme. It works really well. Now the star of the show is going to be this absolutely awful cheap brush that I picked up from the stationery aisle. It is a size 8, uh, vernissage, if you will. <laughs> I have no idea what it translates to in a more reputable brand. Anything which is big, broad, and flat is going to be perfect for what we're going to do here. I have a little bit of Cavalry Brown from Vallejo, and let's try and keep this in shot. Okay, what we'll do is start off just up close against the, uh, the brickwork. Try not to paint over these grey uh, sections here, and I might find that easier with a little bit of water. Uh, but as you can see, we can just very quickly brush along the top of these uh, brick sections if I hit the, I don't know what the architectural term is for these, if we don't hit the little strips, that's great, but don't worry if you do. Once you come to about halfway, what you can do is flip the sucker upside down and just do it from the other side. And that way, you're less likely to hit the stuff that you want to stay grey. So now I am going to paint so many bricks. Now what's funny to me is I actually used to live across the road from a building which looked almost identical to this. Um, if you water down the Cavalry Brown just a little more than usual to get it to flow into the, the cracks and what have you in the bricks, what you'll get is a very slight translucency which gives you the grey underneath. And it'll work quite nicely, especially since it's not going to be uniform across the whole facade, so that'll work really well for a natural look to things. You'll see I have got some uh, on the, the strips in between here. Not a big problem. The only thing you really want to avoid is the stuff that you do want to stay grey. Now, let's carry on trying to keep this on camera. What I'm going to turn to now is Rakarth Flesh. And honestly, again, there isn't really a right colour for this. Just anything which will cover is going to be the most important part, because you want to spend as little time as possible and as few brush strokes as you can tidying this up. So I'm going to rack our flesh these little strippy thingies. And I'm sure if anybody in the comments knows what these are called, I keep wanting to say turnstile, but I know that's wildly incorrect. Now that is going to take a little bit of doing. Don't worry if it's not perfectly tidy. Uh, it's not going to matter in the end too much. What I've made sure is that these sections across the top, you know, I've made sure to fill over that little gap there, but if we look from underneath, shh, don't tell nobody. What I'm going to do now is use here a little bit of German camo black brown to paint in the tiles on the roof. Uh, now these could be all sorts of colours, another very dark red, or 
Even a dark blue or green is not out of the question. Just pick something you like the look of, and away you go. You can be pretty rough with this too. Now while the roof dries, we can spin it around and do a little bit of work to the interior. Now, frankly, putting my own stuff on the table, I wouldn't go to these lengths. The inside is going to look fine, but eh, we can go a little further. What I've got is beige brown, and I'm just really roughly stippling this over the edges where we're getting the uh, broken wood beams and spars and what have you starting to show through. So just flick along that real fast. You can be quite rough and scrubbly with that. The real question now is what are this, you know, what is this stuff on top? Now I'm going for a sort of stone, not marble, you know, just something which has been concreted over. Although you could paint it as a carpet or similar. I'm going back to my Rakarth flesh here. You'll see I'm not worrying too much if I do hit some of what I've just painted. A little bit of overlap will be fine. Now at this point, you could go back and tidy up the gray if you wanted to. Let's just quickly flip that around. You know, that's, that's what we're working with here. What I have is a makeup brush. This is actually a blush, uh, a powder applier, and a little bit of dark sand, just on a bit of kitchen towel. I'm going to dab just a tiny bit of it into the brush, because we really want to leave almost nothing behind. That's why I'm using such a large brush here. Now, weirdly enough, I am going to brush it on my hand because it's actually going to heat up the dark sand a little bit and make sure that we're going to leave next to nothing behind. Because all we want to do here is brush over the brickwork uh, and the gray in a circular fashion back and forth. And you'll see we pick up that detail and uh, leave a little bit of visual interest behind. At this stage, if you do want to shade the miniature, you can go ahead and do that. Um, I would do it after this dry brush, mind you. But I would also suggest, goodness me, something this size is going to just absolutely drink a shade. So if you like the look of this, you know, without having to shade it, then I would suggest skip the shade. But it's up to you. I'm going to dry brush everything. So all of the exterior the gray as well, the roof, and I'm going to flip it around and quickly do the inside as well. So we have now a bit of texture on our brick and our roof and some on the gray, but we're going to carry on dry brushing because we can do a bit more there. What I have is khaki, and I'm going to use this with a slightly smaller brush to get a little bit of a dirty, scungy finish to the base of that gray stuff. So these little shop front areas down here Let's work some of that out of the brush and then just start making this a little grubbier. You'll see it takes a bit to work on, but you don't want to overload your brush and just paint these green. You know, it's not going to look quite right. But by building up a bit of color, you get a neat grimy effect around the base and it'll blend a little bit more naturally into your baseboards. So now that we've got a little bit of grunge and grime on the bottom of the gray there, what I'm going to use, this is green gray. And there are two colors called green gray in the Vallejo range. So I'll include the uh, color number for this one too. This is the lighter one. And you'll see what I mean straight away. I want to use just a fraction, less than that, <laughs> just a little of this very lightly to pick out some more of the gray. Now once I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and pop it on the baseboard. And uh, those are really handy. I'll show you why in a couple of seconds. But yeah, this is very quick, very simple. Now those pre-painted baseboards are awesome. There's little flat things. They've got kind of a slightly flobbery texture so that they lay flat and that they are brilliant because they really put the building into context, which I always talk about as being important for a finished miniature. Not really a miniature in this case though. But the cool thing about them is if you use L-shaped ruins to define the edges of an area of terrain in other games like Chain of Command or Bolt Action, these little baseboards also work super well with 28mm scenery, which you can paint using all of the same techniques that I've just shown you for this Flames of War stuff. 
So thanks again to Battlefront for sending these along for me to have a play with. Um, I've got a lot more to do <laughs> to, to finish off the city, but the base of it is all going to look like this. As always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free, drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So, thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.